Hello, my name is Chris Kiak, and in this video today, I'm going to showcase how to create a custom component um, here in the model based on some materials that I created for this girt to rafter connection here that I manually modeled. Now, to get started, I'm going to first select all the objects that are involved in that connection. So first I'll click on my fitting plane here, which is the setback for the girt itself. And then I can hold down control and window from left to right and grab my clip, my two welds, and my bolt here. Now we'll see that at the lower right I have five objects selected. And the reason why I'm emphasizing for you to take a look at how many objects you have selected is that you consciously wanna be aware of what objects that you have involved in your connection, including any cuts, um, holes, or welds, and make sure that you have the right amount of parts and everything selected to define and wrap up into your custom component. Now I'm gonna go up here to the Applications and Components panel here at the right-hand side of Tecla, and then um, there is this three horizontal bar button, and it's funny, a user, a trainee once told me that, hey, this looks like a stack of pancakes, so we call it the pancake button. So underneath this pancake button here, we can choose the Define Custom Component option. Now when we do that, there are four types of custom components. We are gonna be using a connection type today. And the most common, I would say, that users use is connection and detail. The main difference between, say, a connection and detail is that a connection involves at least two parts that are being connected together. So I'm going to pick at least a primary and one secondary, and I can potentially pick more than one secondary. Now, a detail is more like, uh, say, a base plate where I just pick the column, and then I want to pick a point at the bottom of the column, and it'll insert a base plate there. Or maybe I just want to put a stiffener along the length of a beam or a, or a web penetration or a hole. So details are pick one part and pick a point to locate the stuff you're inputting. Connections are picking two parts to connect them together. All right, so I'm going to choose connection, and I'm going to give this a name. Now, what I would usually do is I would just call this um, essentially the name of the standard clip um, or the joint that you're putting in here. So I'll just put ANG-999 as an example. I'll say next. And it says select the objects that you want the component to create, and that's exactly what we have selected. I'll press next. Then it says pick the main part. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick the rafter here. And then it says uh, pick the secondary parts. I'm just going to go ahead and choose uh, essentially this uh, girt, and then I will finish. Now, when I do this, um, it is a little strange. I, I think it's looking at somehow the intersection planes of the center of that rafter because it just happens to be pretty long. And it's basically putting this out in space. Now, I've got my component inserted here, and um, when I double click on the green cone, there is no dialog box other than I can change kind of the cone direction or orientation, which we actually might use that in a second. But there's really no uh, input fields or anything because it was it's just basically like a 3D block. And this 3D block is basically created up here in my ungrouped items. So we can see there's ANG999. Now, uh, if I actually do a search for that, so 999, we'll also see that it appears when I do a search for it. And um, the next step is for me to actually go see if this works on the other side of the building here at the end wall. Now, I'm going to just delete the existing connection that's here. I will go up here to ANG-999. When I single click on it, Tecla says pick the main part. That was my rafter. Then it says pick the secondary part. And then I'm gonna pick uh, here essentially my girt. Now you'll see that it extends this uh, too far away and it kind of puts the connection off to the side. And a lot of people go, oh man, what the heck? You know, why, why isn't this working? Now it, it very well may not work on this opposite condition because the geometry is a little bit different. But there is sometimes a trick that you can do, especially in symmetrical situations like, um, like in a rotate 180 or a mirror situation from one side of the building to the other. If you actually double click on the cone, I'm gonna maximize my view as well so we can uh, get down here and we can see the current um, rotation of the, uh, the work plane in the model. So you see me circling here underneath the dial box. Positive X is going uh, that way with the red and then Y. And what we are looking for here is the tip of this cone. So right now I can see that this is uh, the tip of this cone is actually pointing to negative X. Well, here in this auto, instead of saying auto, let's actually just swap this here to plus X, which is gonna basically reverse this direction to go the other way. So I'm gonna say modify, and look at that. It actually mirrors this over. Um, it cuts back the girt exactly the way that I need to, and the weld and everything is correct. And let me just double check on that, and I'll say inquire assembly here, and I see that the rafter's orange, the clip is yellow, and really we have everything that we need here. So this is kind of one of those neat cases. I like to demonstrate this because 
um, versus just a simple 90 degree condition because it seems like the component won't work in an opposite hand condition, but it actually will if you just come in here and change the uh, connection cone up direction. All right, so there's a good example of how to define a custom component connection and how to use it in different locations on the building. Okay, so a couple things here. How do we get this custom component that we've made to be able to be used in other models? Now, one thing I just want you to understand is that this is a very uh, job specific custom component due to the slope of the roof, unless you have a common slope that you're using on a lot of your buildings. Um, and it works with this specific profile, this specific profile, and this specific slope. So it's kind of like a 3D generic block in space. But what I do want to show you is that you can take these custom components that you might build, and maybe you have something that works over at uh, Jams and Gertz, which are 90 degree conditions. You commonly use those same shapes, and you want to use this from job to job or just even have a starting point rather than having to manually model everything from scratch again. Now, what we can do is, first thing is, I can actually right click on this component, and uh, let's say that I wanted to actually add this over into my MBS tools group, because I'm gonna commonly use this. So I could add this over there, and then now it goes from the ungrouped items over into my MBS tools group, and we can see it in alphabetical order here. Now, the other thing that I can do is, um, you know, and if I do this, it's only going to be uh, added to this group in this job. If I wanted this to be in my MBS tools group for every job, I actually need to right, uh, right click and say publish group. And then I need to go over into my firm folder. So I've got mine here in uh, Seed Cycle Structures, MBS firm. So let's just go in there. So you would need to actually publish and update this MBS component catalog uh, .ac.xml inside of your MBS firm folder. And that is what stores basically this group of everything. So if you wanted this to be used on uh, you know, all future jobs and have it in your MBS tools so you don't have to manually add it each time, then you would just update this MBS one. Don't update the MBS drawing one because that's for your drawing tools in the drawing editor. Okay, so I'm not gonna do that here because this is just an example, but that shows you how you would do that. Now, how do you actually get the custom component published? Well, you can right click on it and then you can choose the publish option. And by default, it wants to put this inside of your model folder. And it will call it uh, the name of the custom component and put a .uel extension um, at the end. So I'm just gonna say save, and now that custom component has been created and added in my model folder. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come up here to open model folder. I'll do date modified, and there's that UEL file. I'm then just going to cut that. And again, if I wanna use this custom component in future jobs, what I can do is I can just go to my firm folder, so we'll just go in here to my MBS firm folder. And then I have this custom components folder um, that I've created and set up with the MBS firm folder setup that we give clients. And you can just paste this in here. And any UEL files that are found in this custom components folder, it's basically going to automatically insert that custom component whenever you create a new model. Now again, I'm just using this as a test, so I may not want this here permanently. But uh, the other thing we can do is if you have models that are already created, um, I'm going to actually showcase how do you import it into another model. So let's just say I'm gonna keep it here uh, for temporary and I'm gonna go over into a brand new model where this custom component doesn't exist and I'm gonna import it in so you can see it. Okay, so now I'm in a different model and I'm gonna come up here to the pancake button and I'm gonna choose import custom component. When I do that, I'm just gonna then browse to my MBS firm folder here. So we'll just go inside there, go to that custom components folder, and there's my ang-999.uel file. I'll just then double click on that, and that is now imported in. Now, notice that it's in my ungrouped, and that's because I did not update that, um, you know, this basically, my MBS tools in my firm folder, that XML file I was showing you, I didn't update that, so that's why it didn't automatically import into my MBS tools group. But if I would have exported that into my firm folder, then not only would ang-999 be here inside of my model now, but it would actually have also come in here underneath the MBS tools group as defined in my MBS firm folder. But there you go, that shows you essentially how uh, two things. One, how do you publish a custom component and how do you insert it or import it into another model? And then also shows you how to copy some of your common custom components that you're gonna reuse from job to job over into your MBS uh, firm custom components folder so that way you can reuse those um, in future jobs. So again, here in your setup, MBS firm custom components, if you're using KTS's uh, firm folder that we provide clients, then essentially you can copy that in here and then on, upon the creation of any new jobs, these custom component UEL files will be inserted into that model. 
For additional training and setup and configuration of MBS slide rule with Tecla structures, please reach out to me at my contact information shown and I'd be glad to help.